I've got to say the ROG Ally has got some serious potential. I mean, who wouldn't love a handheld that packs a punch, right? But there are a few things that don't sit well with me, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm going to start with Armory Crate, which was completely broken on ship. It also didn't have dead zone controls. I had a problem with my right trigger. It just wouldn't detect it like one in every three presses. The Asus drivers for it were really very far behind battery life. I was getting an average, I'm not kidding, of like 45 minutes. So join us as we test out some modifications that could change this from meh to wow. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. Personally, I find the Ally's biggest problem is the battery life. I mean, it's quite hard to relax and unwind in Fortnite when your device is giving you anxiety about, well, staying powered on. To remedy this, we found a battery with double the capacity. You can get it for around $46 on AliExpress, and this here is what arrived. One box of polystyrene with this little piece of paper. So now we need to open this up. Just gonna lay it down on something soft, and then remove six screws on the back. And the one at the bottom center, in my case anyway, doesn't come out all the way, so just keep that in mind. Now to use the prying tool. Insert it to the gap, and slowly twist to open up the case. That is what she said. I usually work around the bottom first, then the sides, and by the time you're at the top, the back should just come off. Checking the instructions, we need to cut the case in order to have the battery fit. We need to clear this area down here, and to loosen the glue behind the rubber, we use the hairdryer. And next, for something that will definitely void your warranty. Oh. With the stands removed, we checked if the battery had fit, but there's still a slight rocky motion. Yo, which means more cutting. And as you can see, this is a much nicer fit. And the next thing to do is cut a little lower, cut more? Nah. To get to this point, we need to remove the battery and also carefully remove this cable from it. There's four screws that securely fasten the battery to the case. And then we can take out the battery, revealing two pillars that need cutting. Here we go again. <laughs> Now that the cutting's done, we check if the battery actually fits, making sure that nothing digs into it. We applied a layer of aluminium foil tape, shielding the internals slightly from heat generated from the battery, and also vice versa. Over the foil we used some Captain tape to prevent any of the electronics from shorting out. Reconnect the battery by placing it down and securing it with the pin from above. Then we can close the case and give it a try. You may notice now that the power button doesn't turn on the unit, and to fix this, we need to plug it up to the mains. Now you can hold down the power button, and hey presto. After awkwardly logging into Windows, we can see that the battery is indeed charging, and then unplugging it from the mains confirms to us that the battery is working correctly. We then charged it to 100%, we can compare it to the original battery, and indeed, heavy gains. In performance mode on Fortnite, the original gave us one to one and a half hours, whereas the new one, around three, making this a must-have mod for the original ROG Ally. Another thing that I noticed while playing Fortnite was that the sticks felt a bit off. We can set dead zone down to zero on Armory Crate, and that might help, but the real issue is you need to lower the dead zone within Fortnite itself. And once the left stick and right stick around 5%, this game became a joy to play. But then again, I prefer playing games like these on a mouse and keyboard. In my opinion, running Windows on a handheld just feels clunky. Logging in with a password is a hassle. Random updates at the worst times are downright frustrating. And if you think every game will work off the bat, think again. Now, if we compare that to a Steam Deck, Steam OS feels like it was made for handheld gaming. Everything just works seamlessly. Sure, I'd lose out on some games that need anti-cheat like Fortnite, but honestly, I don't mind. Windows is just too bulky, and I'd rather use something like Steam OS. And that is where Bazite OS comes in. 
It's a fork of Linux, designed to be as user-friendly as SteamOS, but with support for a wide range of systems, including the ROG Ally. To install, we go to the Bazine OS website and then download the image for the ROG Ally. Once downloaded, we can use a free tool, Banana Etcher, to burn the image to a USB stick. In order to install it, we need to either overwrite the internal Windows drive, or we could upgrade the internal memory with this adapter from AliExpress that lets us use the cheaper 2280 NVMe sticks. And comparing to upgrading the battery, this is a piece of cake. Remove this posi screw, then take out your NVMe. You can place this in storage in case you want Windows back on your machine, but now we can install the adapter. I used Captain Tape again to prevent shorts, and I'm going to use a 1TB PCIe 3B4 that we had lying around. Now to insert adapter, screw down, insert NVMe, and then screw that down. We can then close the case, and then we'll use a dock so we can use two USB ports, one for the Bazite OS install stick, and another for the wireless keyboard and mouse. In order for the installation to run smoothly, we first need to connect our wireless network. Once you're done here, back out, go to time and date, set your region, and then begin installation. It'll take a few minutes to install, and then eventually you'll end up with this blue screen. Go to Enroll MDK, hit yes, and then type in the password Universal Blue. You'll be asked then to choose a language, a time zone, and then you can log into your Steam account. So what we have now is essentially a ROG Ally with SteamOS. We can use the buttons at the back to either bring up the keyboard or use this menu where we can alter TDP, change fan curve, lights, and things like that. It's pretty neat and we definitely recommend it for the ROG Ally. If you want to use the old NVMe rather than leave it in a drawer, we can do so with one of these things. It'll basically transform a 2230 PCIe NVMe storage to become an external USB-C drive. Insert it at an angle, lay it flat, and then give it a screw. The enclosure also comes with a thermal pad to help keep your storage cool. And that's it, we should be done, right? Well, kind of. As once we plug it in, we can't simply use it. We couldn't even format it. We did, however, find a solution on Reddit. Stockbill8436 explains we need to create a few folders, then mount these to be shared with Bazide. So let's give it a go in the desktop. And once we're in, we'll wipe and format the external drive. To do this, we'll open up KDE Partition Manager. There it is. Then type in the password Bazite. Next, we'll select the external drive, unmount it, and then remove the partitions. Now create a new partition. At the bottom where it says Permissions, press Everyone, Apply, then Apply Pending Operations. I highly recommend using a wireless keyboard, and the reason for that is we need to use Terminal. Here's what to write. sudo mcdir forward slash var forward slash mint forward slash steam. Once you push Enter, you'll be asked for the password, which is Bazite. Once you're done, push Enter. On the next line, type in sudo mcdir forward slash var, forward slash mint, forward slash steam, forward slash steam library, followed by enter. The next line needs to be slightly altered, and here's what you write. sudo chone, bazite, colon, bazite, forward slash var, mint, steam, steam library. Then on the next line, chmod777, forward slash var, forward slash mint, forward slash steam, forward slash steam library. After that's written, push enter, and don't worry, we're almost done. Close the terminal, go back to KDE Partition Manager, use the password Bazite, right click on the partition, go to Unmount, then right click on the partition, and then Edit Mount Point. For the path, type in forward slash var, forward slash munt, forward slash steam, forward slash steam library, and then hit OK. For the next pop-up, hit Save Changes. And that's it, we're pretty much done here. We can now make like a tree and get out of here, now all that extra space can be used for more games. One mod often talked about is to add Hall Effect Sticks. Okest Gamer has provided a guide, and the Hall Effect Sticks are quite cheap on AliExpress, so let's give it a shot. This is what arrived, so let's get cooking. Again, we'll have to open up the rug alley, remove the battery for access, and we're going to start off with the right stick. First, unclip this tab, Pull out the cable, and the same for the small one here. With a small Phillips, remove these four screws. And now the stick module can be completely removed from the ally. We're going to reuse this top thing here, so just pop it off. And as you can see, both sticks are very similar in size. A 
simple switcheroo should do the trickeroo. Out with the old, in with the new. So now that's done, we can move to the other side. It's basically the same over here, but there are three ribbon cables rather than two. The one at the top, one at the bottom, and the one in the middle under this weird rubber thing. Once out, there are four screws to remove. And then we can remove the module. Similar to the other side, both sticks share the same dimensions, but as the stick is close to the L2 trigger, only to shield it from the other magnet. Okest in his video guide does this by sticking on thin strips of aluminium tape, and then finishes it off by using Captain tape to prevent any shorts. Should be able to rotate like this. And now for Captain Crunch. Yarr! Now that no metal is showing, we can screw it into the module. According to the guide, we also need a magnet from the Xbox Elite control pad. Mark on one side, pop the magnet out, and then use tape to attach it to the top part of the whole effect stick. Then we can put everything back together to see the results. So yeah, we can say that it does work, but if you check the bottom value, it is off-center is slightly pulling left. Another thing we noticed is when you push R3, it gets detected as pushing right on the D-pad. Outside that, all the other buttons do seem to work, but using the L2 trigger still affects the left analog stick, and I doubt there's much that can be done to really fix this other than use a technology that isn't dependent on magnets. We could raise the dead zone settings, but having it anywhere above 5 to 10% will make any stick feel inaccurate. So in our opinion, Hall effect sticks on an original ROG Ally isn't really worth doing. So we restored our sticks back to stock. Mmm, much better. One of the most important modifications is to use a screen protector. And as our ally was used, we actually had a J6 map protector already applied. And these things are excellent. We showed the installation of one of them in our Steam Deck video and is still being used today. In the pack, we get two screen protectors. The size matches the display. And we get an application guide to ensure it fits perfectly. Moving on to case protectors now, we actually got a Skull & Co one with the used ally, and we actually like this a lot. We just insert the ally like this. Once the bottom's in, we push over the top, and that's it. It works as a stand without requiring anything, and it bulks up the area where your hands go, making it feel much better to hold in stock. Here's how it looks on the back. And yeah, good stuff. Another option is the mod case from JSOX. Concept is very similar to the Skull & Co, but we get front protection too. There's a soft sheet of foam protecting the screen, as well as an area for micro SD cards if you require it. Here's the back piece. We also get some straps. Not quite sure of the use, but we might be able to turn the ally into a watch. As for the use, it is a bit tight to get on, especially around the top trigger buttons where we needed to stretch out the case. But once on, it does its job of protecting the ally. Much like the previous mod case, it thickens out the handheld to make it more comfortable to play, as well as giving the area at the top a bit of protection. There's a stand at the back, similar to a Nintendo Switch, that gives a satisfying snap as you close it. Using the stand, it sits at a good angle, and again, it's much more comfortable to play than stock. And as the plastic is hard, we get full protection for transportation. As for the watch straps, I seriously have no idea. Next up is the mod case from Handheld DIY. It's a replacement back shell that promises lower temperatures, built-in stand, as well as lovely translucent plastics. So in the box we get the shell, a watch strap, and all the bits you need to install. So again, back plate off. And unfortunately, it's not pre-modified to fit in the larger battery. So here we go again. Now once we've flattened the area for the battery, we need to use a small Phillips driver to transfer over the back buttons. And the same again for the triggers. This back plate lowers temperatures by using a bit of metal that stretches along the back of the case. Just going to use a wet wipe to clean this up. And this area here is going to make contact with the included thermal block. Just going to pop it down here. Then continue to close the case. Oh, but there's one more thing. 
From Handheld DIY you can get a custom nameplate. So out with the old, and in with the new. It looks pretty nice. But it would have looked much better in white. The overall feel is very similar to the stock experience, and that can be good as well as bad, as it would have been nice if they made this area around the back rounder and a little larger. As for the stand at the back, it's perfectly functional. And the watch thing, we can actually use it here. Maybe to hold something like, hmm, a bit of suntan lotion, yeah. As for temperatures, there wasn't that much of a difference, maybe two or three degrees. And if you want your device to be cooler, it'd make more sense to use the lower TDP and turn on V-Sync. If you want to use this backplate with the other mods, we can do that by simply removing the stand. There's only two screws that hold it in. And once completely removed, we can mix and match with the other mod cases. We hope this video has helped you find mods worthy trying on the ROG Ally. Links are in the description down below, and if you have any questions, throw down a comment. A quick thank you goes out to RetroRob, all of these lovely Patreon members, and you, the viewer. If you'd like to help us out, we have a Patreon and Discord, and maybe check one of our other videos. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. And this is John Luke. Check my pecs. Right.